Good afternoon traders, my name is Tomasz Wiśniewski, I'm a chief analyst in Alpari Research and Analysis and this is daily analytical report with uh, Alpari. So I will tell you what's going on on the market and we'll try to look for uh, decent uh, trading uh, setups for uh, this week. As always we will start with the macro calendar because it's uh, quite busy today and uh, it will be busy uh, this uh, week. So let's um, start uh, well, what you can see uh, here is um, important uh, event that we had in the morning of the european uh, session that was a interest rate decision and statement from a reserve bank of australia uh, rates uh, remained unchanged uh, as uh, was uh, widely expected by uh, by the market but um, also we I got the statement and the statement was uh, dovish uh, for the uh, Australian dollar as we found out uh, that uh, RBA Reserve Bank of Australia thinks that Australian dollar can be a bit too strong uh, right now and that can um, be a problem for the economy and uh, we were above 0.8 on Australian dollar to American dollar and now we are below uh, that level also this movement is a little bit supported by small correction of the value of the American dollar that we are having um, that we are having uh, today because uh, yesterday American dollar got uh, beaten very badly again and today we do have a correction of this movement uh, today we got uh, we have a pmi uh, day already we got uh, from japan uh, from china as you can see which came slightly better than expected uh, pmis from eurozone uh, but also an important data that we got was uh, GDP from Eurozone and as you can see 2.1 as expected uh, that is a good data uh, and it shows us that uh, GDP uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Eurozone is, uh, is going higher is uh, going higher nicely and the recovery is sustainable uh, so actually all that action uh, from the uh, from the European Central Bank, it finally kind of worked. As you can see, this uh, GDP is going higher, higher, higher uh, since uh, it was. So uh, we had a contraction in 2012, 2013, mm, uh, but we're having a nice uh, recovery, uh, and uh, one can say it's accelerating uh, here right now. So that was a good data, Euro is heading higher. Actually on Euro dollar, uh, we got an upswing of 500 uh, pips, not now, but uh, latest upswing 500 pips without any stronger correction, without a correction of, uh, bigger than 100 pips. So uh, that uh, upswing seen on Euro dollar is, uh, we can call it logarithmic, uh, it's uh, going very very high we are crashed through long-term resistance we are very close to the next long-term uh, resistance and we'll see how uh, what will happen next um, we also do have PMIs today from Canada from uh, US uh, important data for oil traders oil is doing very good uh, today we do have API weekly crude oil stock uh, change. We uh, have a, a GDT price index which is important for New Zealand dollar. So you can see that the calendar today is uh, packed and we had a lot of data and still uh, a lot of data too. Uh, cool. As for the market events, uh, not really, to be honest with you. Uh, we don't have any mm, strong political news or geopolitical news. Uh, still tensions um, around North Korea 
uh, but markets uh, got used to that I guess uh, still mm, uncertainty in uh, in White House but also I think that market mm, got used to that uh, so no main uh, market uh, movers different than uh, than we had uh, in the past few days or uh, weeks so same old same old traders need to earn money and that's uh, where we are going uh, to help you in this place we are going to show you nice uh, trading occasions on the market and explain the situation from the technical point of view first we will start with cable which is in the long term uptrend no surprise for us as we were saying that for a long time and actually the latest few weeks the price was creating this wedge uh, this kind of wedge could have been dangerous for the sellers but as you can see buyers took the control over and instead of breaking the lower line of the wedge we broke the upper line of the wedge uh, so we can move this resistance uh, here and uh, there is a horizontal uh, support uh, here as long as we stay above the black line uh, the sentiment is positive and there is a, a buy signal here I don't think there is a, uh, anything else to add here sentiment is positive the price making higher highs and higher lows and the closest resistance is uh, here as you can see it's taken from those uh, highs mm, and actually that's a good risk to reward ratio trade uh, if we are having a correction here maybe it will go here uh, stop loss 60 70 pips potential profit 270 that's a great trade in terms of the risk to reward ratio and that's the ratio that traders should be looking for when trading And the next one will be euro dollar. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, from from this top, 540 pips, without any uh, bigger uh, correction. I guess so we got the correction here. Yes, 100 pips. All together from the bottom, 1,500 pips. That's pretty amazing upswing. On a weekly chart as you can see we broke uh, this resistance horizontal one and we are heading to the next one that's a weight area w wide area from the support uh, from 2010 to the support from 2012 i think this is 100 pips uh, area 180 170 pips uh, where the stronger correction can start but actually uh, we were expecting maybe not expecting but uh, maybe not anticipating but um, we could get suspicious in those areas uh, here and here but no bigger correction so uh, also the price can just bridge those levels and climb higher why not that's just a potentially nice place for a reversal but uh, it's uh, it's not set anywhere that we have to reverse here and bounce here Uh, next instrument is American dollar to Canadian dollar. Uh, I think this support got uh, lost the relevance here uh, because it was breached and broken many times. I think this one is no longer relevant here as well. Uh, this uh, the, uh, lower line of the channel up as well. And this one will be no longer in use. Uh, so we are having uh, this uh, dynamic support, this uh, this di dynamic resistance and this horizontal support. And breakout of uh, the blue line should trigger a sell signal. It won't be nothing big because it will be just 30 pips uh, signal because we do have the support. Um, but breakout of the uh, red line can be potentially very um, promising for the buyers. 
American dollar to Swiss franc. We recently wrote an analysis about this uh, pair. Uh, what we wanted to show you is this uh, bullish engulfing pattern. Uh, you, it, it's not an outside bar. It's a engulfing, and because uh, the second uh, candlestick overlaps the first one with bodies, not with shadows, but with bodies, and it hap it's happening on a very important support. This one and this one right so it looks like this area was uh, defended and from this point the price should climb mm, higher that's what we are anticipating on american dollar to swiss uh, franc mm, uh, that's what the lines and dots are trying to tell us we broke uh, this area well buyers are struggling to hold the uh, price above this level no, but it's nothing dangerous as long as we stay above this horizontal support. I don't think it should be uh, dangerous. Also, uh, look at that a left shoulder, head, and a right shoulder that's inverse head and shoulder formation. So, this inverse head and shoulder formation is uh, that's a breakout, uh, breakdown of this uh, bullish engulfing pattern, right? So, on a bigger time frame on a weekly chart that's a bullish engulfing when we uh, use smaller time frame it's inverse head and shoulder formation so we do have two reversal patterns at once just different time frames that's interesting and next one will be australian dollar to american dollar which is losing the ground right now as you can see, this is this reaction after this dovish statement of her Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, we do have this horizontal support uh, here, uh, still should be relevant. I think uh, once this horizontal support will be broken, the next stop is here. So again, it creates a nice trading opportunity. So entering short position here with a stop loss somewhere above like stop loss 40 pips let's say you can get 70 not the best but still all right american dollar to mexican peso yesterday the buyers tried to uh, break uh, this uh, horizontal resistance uh, they didn't manage uh, but i think that uh, amount of the sell orders here on this 38 point of Fibonacci level I think this amount is decreasing and that creates a chance for a, a bullish breakout and this bullish breakout here is uh, rather very I would say it is possible well everything is possible on the market but uh, I mean that uh, the probability of this upswing is uh, getting higher and higher and silver, silver is very interesting uh, because after this flash crash is 7th of uh, June, we are climbing higher. The price creates this uh, channel up formation. And finally, we go to the long term resistance created by three uh, lines. First one is this dynamic resistance here of the mid term downtrend. Second one is this horizontal resistance, which was which is with us since the end of January, right? It was a support after the breakout. It was a resistance and resistance. Also, we had this uh, upper line of the channel up formation, especially relevant here. Maybe here not so much, but still the area was very close. And buyers failed to break uh, this uh, level. And if in case of a breakout, it would open them away to this long-term and uh, dynamic uh, resistance uh, here. Right, so they failed and now uh, they are getting punished for that because the price is attempting to uh, break the lower line of the channel up formation, which can be potentially very dangerous for them. Mm, uh, the next stop in case of a breakout which is happening right now next stop should be this black line which is a long-term uptrend line we came back above uh, this line again and i think that if this line will be broken that will be uh, that 
can be a huge trouble for, for the buyers. Uh, horizontally, I can see another uh, potential support here. As you can see, support so it's relevant here, 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 here. So this, this can be the next one, but it does not look promising right now. It looks like uh, buyers will have a problem with that. When trying to estimate the, mm, the direction on silver, I sometimes uh, look on gold. Obviously, those two instruments are correlated very well. Uh, and the sentiment on, on gold is very positive, even uh, despite the fact that we're having a decline here and uh, it looks strong. Uh, we are still above three important supports. First one is under attack right now, right? But it's a short term support. Well, short term for me, mid term probably for you, uh, horizontal one. So breaking it shouldn't be anything special. But the next one is the long term support. Here, support, support. After the breakout, resistance, resistance. After the breakout, support. And what we got here uh, is an uptrend line. So here we do have a combination of this long term horizontal support and uptrend line which makes this area very very promising for the buyers and uh, it looks good it looks like a good place for uh, for a defense for starting new bullish uh, bullish uh, wave we'll see first uh, sellers needs to break this horizontal resistance i don't think uh, well it can happen obviously everything can happen but as i said at the very beginning it shouldn't change the sentiment here uh, sentiment will be changed only when the price will come back below $1,258 per ounce. As long as we stay above and this level $1,258 per ounce, uh, buyers are re re relatively safe. Next one is British pound to Japanese yen when I'm see where I'm seeing a nice uh, buying opportunity. Uh, why is that? You may think that there is a downtrend here, but it's not. We are climbing higher since the October. And if you consider this drop from 2015, you have to notice that we already broke the downtrend line, which in theory should activate the buy signal. Uh, so we are, we are having an uptrend since the October uh, 2016. Uh, price is making higher maybe not higher highs, but definitely higher lows, low, 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 uh, upswing, flag, where we do have an inverse head and shoulder pattern, upswing, flag, where we do have an inverse head and shoulder uh, pattern, so uh, resemblance here is uncanny, and as you can see, uh, the chances that we will break the upper line of the flag uh, are uh, actually very high, especially that, for example, uh, we do have another inverse head and shoulder pattern here. So left shoulder, head and right shoulder, uh, left shoulder, head and right shoulder. Also, the head itself was created with inverse head and shoulder pattern, left shoulder, head and right shoulder. So this instrument likes this pattern. But there is no buy signal yet here. What we have to wait, what uh, patient traders should wait for is a breakout of the upper line of the uh, of the flag. So so far, no buy signal yet. Uh, only the positive sentiment is present, and the positive sentiment will be present as long we will hold above this horizontal line. Um, and uh, Yes, patient traders just wait for the breakout, which, uh, well, the probability of uh, this breakout that it will happen is quite high. Next one is New Zealand dollar to Japanese yen. I thought that uh, after the breakout of this horizontal support, we will have a positive sentiment here, but the price retraced and is heading higher, uh, lower. So this definitely can be considered as a false breakout. And we all know, well, if you're, if you're with us uh, for a longer time, you all know uh, what false, breakout, false breakouts are doing, and that they are uh, causing a movement in the opposite direction. And most probably that will happen here. 
there are not many supports uh, left uh, to be honest with you um, where the ups downswing can stop I think that it's rather wide area here it looks like that I guess but that's not the strongest support I have ever seen in my life American dollar to, uh, to a Chinese yuan heading lower and lower and lower but from time to time they try to reverse as they uh, went down sharply uh, today at night European time now they are trying to recover from that uh, especially that they are defending on a very important local support uh, which, which was a resistance in uh, January it was proven as a resistance in June uh, I'm sorry it was in uh, in January yes it was proven as a resistance in uh, July 2016 and after the breakout it was proven as a support in June 2017 and is tested as a support uh, now from the price action point of view it still looks good as long as we are above the green area there is a buy signal present here American dollar to Japanese yen is doing exactly what expected uh, we were writing here I guess that the decline should continue and, and there is a positive there is a ne negative sentiment here and that, that the next uh, support is uh, this lower line mm, here we can make it like that one 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 uh, so we touch this local support as long as we stay below this line and this horizontal resistance the sentiment is negative American dollar to Polish Lotte another lower lows 360 psychological barrier that's what we are saying uh, that we are slowly getting to 352 which is a long term uh, support and a potential target for this movement that where that is a place where uh, potential re reversal can happen Euro to Japanese yen is uh, is knocking uh, to the heavens door. Let's say, let's say it like that. Maybe not this kind of uh, triangle, but that's an ascending triangle. Uh, from the technical point of view, ascending triangle in an uptrend is a invitation for a for a bullish wave, and uh, that is a decent trading signal. And that is a very decent trading signal, especially that we're uh, not that we have a clear target here. Uh, so, for example, entering with a long position here after the breakout can give us 200 pips, which is not a bad at all, if you ask me. But yes, well, that's not me speaking. That's the technical analysis speaking that a breakout of that the ascending triangle in an uptrend is an indicator for a further uptrend for a further upswing and if you're looking for a decent uh, risk to reward ratio trade as you can see here you can wait for the breakout uh, of uh, the local tops or maybe those tops uh, but anyway let's uh, see from the middle 60 pips uh, stop loss and one more time 60 pips stop loss 200 pips take profit that's the risk to reward ratio which uh, looks good Australian dollar to Japanese yen and that's a very mm, that's a bearish sign uh, two weekly candlesticks in a row uh, shooting stars candles with the long uh, heads uh, bouncing of a horizontal resistance two in a row that's a sell signal on Australian dollar to Japanese yen it's a counter trade in terms of uh, this uptrend for, uh, which lasts a year 
So from the middle of 2016, from uh, June 2016, but when we, when we consider this, it's uh, it is not. Actually, I would like to check uh, those. Huh, who would have thought? Right, that's a correction equality pattern. Very very long term 1650 pips and this one is 1700 pips and two shooting stars here and a horizontal resistance uh, obviously uh, when we go with Fibonacci we are still above 50 they are not working so well here maybe here 50 okay they are right 50 and 38.2 as you can see the price is respecting that and this can be a nice training opportunity here most probably we also have a uh, we also have a double top formation here i wouldn't be surprised if we had a double top formation and the closest support in the short term is here so if you're a patient trader you would wait for the breakout of this red line and after that you can enter long position let's say like that so maybe uh, uh, we can have a blue line yeah it's a nice setup it's a nice trading setup uh, oil and indexes we will talk about that uh, tomorrow now uh, let me show you New Zealand dollar to American dollar uh, where we broke from this uh, flag we're heading higher 50 uh, we broke 50 percent FIBO um, and uh, the closest target is here and we should get there we should get there soon New Zealand dollar and American dollar this pair is going very technically and I think that it's a matter of a few weeks that we'll climb those 200 pips higher euro to uh, British pound what we are having is this channel up formation uh, we bounce from the upper line of the channel up formation but we still had uh, this uh, support ahead of us Okay, it's uh, better like that. So here, that's a nice support. If the price will decline, that's the place where one can look for a good uh, buying opportunity. And Euro to Australian dollar. So yesterday I wrote that analysis, I think, to the Polish investing. We were here yesterday. Now let me show you where we were here yesterday when I was writing that and I said that there is a bigger uh, chance for an upswing that the price will climb higher and the price climbed higher and is on the highest level since 13 of, uh, of uh, July and the chances that we will get to this uh, dynamic resistance are big and after that what will happen after that well that's an uptrend that's a trend continuation pattern so it seems like the trend should be continued so that was the first step a step was made and that's the first target but long-term target should be a breakout of this upper line of this uh, flag formation so it looks really promising i like this uh, setup uh, I was writing about that yesterday that this breakout is more uh, probable uh, and it happened and I think that the the further scenario written by us uh, in this analysis should happen as well thank you my friends very much uh, we found some decent setups on the market I'm very happy with that uh, I hope uh, to see you in half an hour because now we'll have a break and after that we'll have a webinar about uh, the basics of the forex market and I hope to see you all uh, there. Thanks very much and goodbye.